If you remember one or two videos ago, I explained to you about this Eheim feeder and where uh, goldfish would get caught in that basket. That basket is so, uh, if you have a power filter running, it doesn't blow the food all over the tank. It lets it drop directly on the bottom. Well, goldfish have a tendency, our bigger fish, to go in that basket and then it gets stuck. And what I did is a simple modification of burning some holes into the plastic and adding 20 gauge stainless steel wire through the holes I burnt. And you can buy the wire on Amazon. It's 20 gauge stainless steel uh, 316 wire. And that's all I did to stop the fish from going up into it. And remember, if you remember when I did a report on the feeder, the feeder is excellent, except I don't know why Eheim did not build a plastic grid to go on the bottom to prevent fish from going in there. And of course, what happened is I went on vacation and of course, a big fat goldfish went in there and got stuck the whole time I was on vacation. So I just thought I would show you a quick update on the feeder here because it is a decent feeder and if you buy the cup you can buy like like I said you can buy the whole feeder off of Amazon along with the cup uh, that you add on to it which is great because when you're on vacation and you can't shut the pumps down the food's just going to blow all over the place if it lands on top of the aquarium with that little basket it soaks and then drops down to the bottom of the aquarium. So there's there's not a problem then for the fish to eat up the food. And uh, that's really not that much food going in there. But So you can have them feed once a day, twice a day. But as you see, the basket allows the food to go through and the wires allow it. But it prevents the fish from going in the basket. So that's enough of this. I thought I would show you. So in case you do have a feeder like this, a little modification you can do to it. Okay, now let's get into the cherry shrimp. A few months ago, I put some cherry shrimp into this aquarium and I got them from the bottom of the filter, the F zone filter. They apparently got sucked in and the shrimp that was in it, I dumped in this tank. Now this is a tank I don't do anything with. I did a video on it on, it's a like a self-sustaining ecosystem, which it is. But out of, I think there was like 12 shrimp, the cherry shrimp that I dumped in here. And today, and that's, it's only been a few months, there's probably, I'm going to guess, at least 100 cherry shrimp in this aquarium. And I do nothing to it. And I'm being honest with you. I do nothing to it. I don't feed them. You know, a lot of times you see people, they put little trays to feed the shrimp. I don't do anything to this aquarium. Yeah, I add water to it. And I want to make sure the water stays hard. But the, uh, but the whole system is a self-sustaining ecosystem. I have two pots in there with Crip. One pot has... Uh, kitty litter in it, and the other pot has a nice full um, array of soil that was high in nutrients. And it seems like the pots of these two plants, though I started them last year, they didn't grow much, even though there is some seal too. But anyhow, the flame moss, this is flame moss I bought from PetSmart. It comes in a package. And I took a little bit out of the 90 gallon and put it in this antique aquarium, added those 12 little shrimp, and uh, did nothing to it. In fact, the bottom cover only has about a half inch of kitty litter, okay? And I added some large pea gravel to the kitty litter just to give it some texture to make it look cosmetically nice. So that plant that I put in, that was the plants that were seeds 
I got from Amazon. Uh, that's as much as they've grown in the time I've owned them because there's really not much there, that plant that you're looking at there. So I don't really do much at all to this tank. If anything, I don't even have to uh, clean the glass except maybe once a month, clean the glass. And this is sitting in front of a window. And as you can see, the tons of cherry shrimp. And I'm going to be honest with you. A long time ago, I could not really keep shrimp. I just couldn't keep them. I don't know if you're one of those hobbyists that, but if I had to rate myself between one to 10, I would rate myself as a one. Terrible with keeping any kind of shrimp alive. Uh, crayfish, yeah, I could keep alive crayfish. That's not a problem. But when it came to shrimp, they'd live maybe, you know, a month, two months, three months, three months max, and then they were all gone. Uh, they didn't multiply. They didn't do anything. Uh, I try to do everything right, give them food, blah, you know, your typical stuff. And I know cherry shrimp are, are hardy shrimp from my understanding, but still I couldn't keep even cherry shrimp, couldn't keep anything. Go shrimp, cherry shrimp, you name it. And in this tank, they seem to love what's on the flame moss, but me doing nothing to this tank, and this tank, remember, this uses a filter, an ADA filter, with nothing but a BCB bag in it, a big BCB bag in it. And that's basically the filtration system. Canister with a BCB bag in it, and of course there's some uh, filtering material in there, like sponges and stuff like that. But otherwise, that's it. They do not get fed. I have never fed them. I have never done anything to this tank at all. Uh, of course, there's only one little fish in here, uh, a molly, about half inch, but it doesn't pose as a threat to any of the shrimp, so apparently that's why they're out. <clears throat> but as you can see, with a, with a person like me who can't keep shrimp, it's doing great. I mean, I, I hate to even do anything to the tank because they are multiplying and apparently they have plenty of food. And as you notice, there's no algae. I'm using a uh, makeshift light with a pendant light with the GE Alter Bright. And they seem to be doing great. And this is the first time I've been able to keep fish for years. I not not fish, but I'm sorry, shrimp for years. And I'm going to admit, if any of you are out there and you just can't seem to keep shrimp for one reason or another, like me, and I, like I said, I'm very poor at keeping shrimp. I was, I was the worst. Uh, I don't know why they just wouldn't live. All of a sudden now, these shrimp are just going crazy. And like I said, I started out with about 12 and there's like a hundred of them in there. Whatever they're finding to eat, this whole ecosystem is just what they want. And as you can see, there's really no algae on the plants or anything. It seems to be self-sustaining is what I'm saying. Look at this. Not a bit of algae anywhere. And look at the pots. No algae on the pots. Nothing. So I thought I would show everybody this. So if you're, you're one of those hobbyists like me, who can't seem to keep shrimp, and you're terrible at it, I thought I'd do a quick video. Maybe you need to try something like this. Sprinkle a little kitty litter at the very bottom. You can mix it up with some, you know, larger stones if you want for cosmetic reason. Buy yourself some of that flame moss or whatever moss you want. Add a few shrimp to it, you know, have a canister or maybe a hang on the back filter with a BCB bag in it. And look at it. They're doing great. Absolutely great. Of course, there's no, I will tell you this, there's no nitrates and phosphates in this aquarium. Now, does that have something to do with it? I don't know. Like I said, I'm terrible at keeping shrimp. I'm terrible. And I'll admit it. So is it because the lack of phosphates and nitrates is why these shrimps 
are doing so well? I don't know. You answer me. I could not keep anything. But now this tank is like crazily great. I mean, this is what everybody's looking for. Very simple. It's not even using a plenum. Like I said, can't be more than a half inch of kitty litter at the very bottom. That's it. With a BCB bag, a big one. So if you're one of those people who have tried shrimp, you've been unlucky like I have, maybe you ought to try something like this. Try it out in a small aquarium. I know that in the bed aquarium that I made, I put some shrimp in there, and they're doing great also with that. But once again, I'm using kitty litter and a plenum and not anything like a BCB bag or anything. And the shrimp in there are doing good, but here they really multiplied in a few months from 12 shrimp to over 100 shrimp. That's as much as I can count. You know, I, I, I did the best I could. But that's a lot of shrimp without ever having to feed them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. i try to get more information out to you. But if you're like me, you're sick and tired of buying shrimp for five, six, seven dollars a piece, and you're just dying on you, here's something you may want to try. Because I'm telling you the truth. I'm lousy at keeping shrimp. And they aren't dying. Uh, of course, in my 90-gallon tank, I will say the shrimp have do, been doing great in that tank, even even to the point where my Amano shrimp have been, you know, doing great. But uh, other than that, no, I've never been able to keep shrimp. So until next time, this is Dr. Novick. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you like my little Eheim modification. You may have to do a modification like that. To burn the holes in, it's easy. Just take a you can take a, um, you know, a welding iron or a hot pin and just burn six little holes in it or to send the wire through. It's pretty simple. Then trying to drill it, maybe break the plastic if you can't drill it. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. It does help. But uh, I don't know. I was quite amazed. I thought I would do a video on it. So until next time, happy fish keeping.